Uh, recession busters. Well, Kathy, there's a lot of people that are just simply looking at trimming their entertainment mm -hmm. budget a bit. Yeah. But uh, there's a lot of people as well these days, Kathy, that don't have uh, pennies to rub together and they find themselves in very challenging mm -hmm. times. And David Smith of Scott Mission in Toronto. Yes. Welcome to 100 Welcome. Huntley Street. Thanks for You're a long time friend of ours and what you're doing, what you're doing is absolutely wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I know Scott Mission has been around since what, 1940 something? 1941. 1941 has been doing a great work, but you're saying in the last three months during winter, mm -hmm. the demand on Scott Mission has gone up 20%. It's been amazing to see people we've never seen before coming, people who were working, now not working, uh, people losing hope. It's really been overwhelming. Mm. Now you brought some photographs along. I'd like to show, uh, show folks uh, Scott Mission, some of the ministry that you're doing there, and, and tell us what we're seeing. This is the outside of the Mission building on uh, Spadina and College. Easy place to drop off your donations of food and clothing. Yeah, and we're going to get into that, <laughs> folks, I tell you. Here's, Here's a gentleman, a uh, new pair of shoes, and I see a lunch beside him. A typical situation, and obviously it's summer there, but uh, just a pair of shoes makes so much difference. They can't get around if they don't have uh, good footwear, and uh, mm. um, very typical. Here's a few of our kids in our daycare. We've got 60, 64 kids in our daycare, all very low-income uh, families and uh, summer camp up in Caledon for 600 kids every summer. Really fantastic. 600 kids and they get go there. Get them out of the city. They go there for $25. You can't get a deal like that oh, anywhere. Oh man, and here's a mother it looks here's, like. Here's a mother and her two kids coming out of the food bank dragging their, <laughs> their, uh, their blessings with them. Yes. Um, 300 meals every morning for our homeless men and women and uh, they're prepared. We have 4,000 volunteers every year. Oh, oh really, isn't that wonderful? Here they just have a great time making these meals. This is, uh, this is God at work. This is a uh, Christian community at its best. And you know, there's a typical <laughs> homeless person or maybe your father or, or mine or our brother yeah. having some yeah. soup who's hungry. So uh, it's uh, in many ways a classic uh, soup kitchen, but in another it's, uh, it's really communion and with God and each other. Provide as well, clothing, clothing, basic needs for clothing for, for men, casual clothing, very basic needs and obviously uh, brings a lot of joy. Yeah. Well, David, you know, uh, with Crossroads Missions, we really introduced ourselves, are connected with Scott Mission with One Homeless Night. What God laid on our hearts several years ago to find those organizations across Canada that are Christ-centered, that are working with those that have fallen upon hard times, that perhaps find themselves homeless. And Scott Mission is one of those great organizations. In fact, on our website, I want to mention this, at the crossroads.ca website, you go to One Homeless Night, you can see a listing there of 31 organizations from coast to coast in Canada that you can connect with. And I'm sure they have a, a food bank and a clothing bank. You might be wondering, well, uh, I just don't know where to help. But here's a place you can certainly start. And I know, David, as well, a lot of local churches, like even our local church in Grimsby, they have a food bank. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I don't think they have a clothing bank, but they have a food bank there. And, uh, and the pastor and his wife that's going to be on a little bit later on in this hour that has a church in Toronto, they also have a food bank. And uh, talk to us about the opportunity. There is opportunity for people to help, right? The need's there. there. There's an opportunity for all of us to go into our kitchens and get a few more cans out this week to give to the local food bank oh, and yeah. get into those closets and pull out that stuff we don't need anymore. I mean, um, it's a 20% increase at the Scott Mission, but you were saying earlier, Reynold, how that, that increase might be 10% if the local food banks got help yeah. from us. And yeah, so it's, yeah. they don't have to come all the way down to Toronto and, and bring food and clothing. Yeah. Give it to the local food bank. Give it to your church. Work through your church. Help your pastor to reach out. And, uh, you know, I always like to say with two million working people in, in Toronto, imagine if everybody found an extra $100 a Problem year. Solved. 200 million in one year. Yeah. Imagine if we did that every month. Wow. Mm -hmm. you, could, you could literally go a long way to solving poverty in, in this country. Okay, and but, but someone might say, David, well, I could go through my food pantry and fill up a couple of bags, and I could probably go through my closet and fill up a bag or two of clothes, but, mm -hmm. but that won't really make a difference. I'm just one person. I'm just one household. Oh, you multiply it by, by hundreds of thousands and millions of people, and you have a solution. Okay, Kathy and I commit, okay? 
This week when we're doing grocery shopping, we'll fill an extra couple of bags, okay? okay. Let's do that. Now I'm okay. looking at her because she does mostly the grocery <laughs> shop. I push the cart this once in a while. For you it's very frustrating no, trying that, to find things a, in a grocery store. That'll store. be a joy. That'll but a as joy. far as even, even the clothing, now we do this all the time. We kind of purge the clothing and we put it together and we give it. But uh, our, our church, Not junky clothing, yeah, our church uh, has a food bank. On Sunday, they were even talking about it. So we commit to do that, okay? And I want to encourage all of you. Uh, encourage, we won't challenge, we'll say that. That's kind of a confrontational word. But I encourage, okay, you to prayerfully consider this week when you're grocery shopping or even just going over to your pantry after 100 Huntley Street's over, not during, but after 100 <laughs> Huntley Street's over, and see if there's some extra canned goods and whatnot. And I guarantee you, guarantee you, somewhere in your community, there's a food bank. There's a church, if not your church, there's a food bank. As I said on our website, there's a whole listing of 31 organizations across Canada that are full-time working with uh, those that have fallen upon hard times. You can contact them. But do something. We encourage you. Do something. When we all do, boy, I tell you, there's a lot of people that watch Huntley Street. As a result of this, there could be, there could be... 25,000 or 50,000 families that respond. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Yeah. David, uh, you know, Reynolds has given this this encouragement. Encouragement. Not a challenge, an encouragement. Um, we're sitting here and we hear the statistic 20%. Mm -hmm. um, in our family circle, that statistic has not hit, right? We don't have anybody in our family circle that we know has really hit hard times. Uh, so, so help us help us really relate heart to heart. What are you encountering when you meet these people for the first time that I'm sure are just in a, a state of shock? Like, this is where I am? You've got to be kidding. Yeah. I think it's, it's hard to see a, a native Canadian reach this point where they have to come to a mission and uh, get in the lineup and register for food and clothing. But uh, Toronto is really a, a city of many nations. And this is reflected in Heaven's Rehearsal, which has been such a huge success. It, they're coming from every nation, and they come in waves. Just lately, a lot of uh, new, new immigrants from Mexico. Before that, it was Russia. We've even seen Muslim, Muslim people, people of Muslim faith, coming to the mission. And uh, we don't, we don't, there are no conditions. You just, you just get help. But imagine leaving everything behind, leaving here, Burlington, or wherever we're from, going to another country where they don't even, you don't even speak their language. You have nothing. You've had to abandon everything. And most of your family is back where you came from. You come alone. This is um, Morris Eidman, who founded the Scott Mission. He came from, uh, from Poland at a very troubled time with nothing. So imagine that. It's, it's not just losing your job and then one worrying if you're going to get another one. It's having every possible barrier erected in front of you as a newcomer to this, to this country. And if we don't have our newcomers, we aren't going to have much.